needs to be stopped. We cannot stand by and watch while thousands of innocent people die in defense of the land that was cruelly, abruptly, and suddenly taken from. Now, our state's policy to rectify this wrong is that Germany should recognize the state of Palestine, and the features of the state is that we'll have a government and legislative council with the elections that are already present in Palestine but are monitored and approved by UN monitors. And we want Israel to recognize this as well. The end goal is to have Palestine as a legitimate state that has full status as a state in the United Nations. As my first speaker, I'll prove why Germany needs to do something considering its role in the Holocaust. Second of all, why the, recognizing the Palestinian state is the best way Germany can do something. And thirdly, why Germany should be the one who urges Israel to do the same. So first of all, we'd like to prove to you that Germany is indeed responsible for the Holocaust, an event which directly led to the Israel-Palestine conflict in its current iteration and form. In two ways. First, by creating Israel. And secondly, by breeding Israeli insecurity. So first of all, the rise of, it, of creating Israel, the rise of anti-Semitism which culminated in the brutal Holocaust was what drove Jewish immigrants in droves away from Germany to a land called Palestine. Hence, what was once a Muslim territory, territory became violently displaced by the influx of Jews in a Muslim-dominated region. This was how, by pushing Palestinians from their homes, chasing them from promised land, Israel was formed in the ashes of a Muslim community. And, and and therefore, we argue that this resulted in a lot of disturbance in the region and started the Israel-Palestine conflict. With the cause of the Holocaust, there was no way that, without the Holocaust, there was no way that Jews would ever have had to reach Palestine, and no way that Palestinians would have been forced up in the way that they did, and therefore we argue that Germany has a direct role in the creation of the Israel-Palestine conflict in its current form. But more than that, it has led to the result of Israeli insecurity breeding. Because when the reason Jews fled was the reason so heinous and so vile that the Jews found a possibility that their race would never exist again. The Holocaust was a systematic, deliberate execution of a race that was already prosecuted for 2,000 years. Sir. No, thank you. Now, this, this, was, this left a legacy so painful and so intense that the Jews stood up on the remains of their civilization and cried out, never again. And this memory that they live behind, this legacy that the Holocaust is behind, isn't just a memory, because the effects are still being felt on the ground. The Jews who had suffered directly in the Holocaust and somehow survived, and their plight represent graphic visual reminders to the people of Israel that the pain that Germany has left is still there. The rates of colon cancer among survivors are nine times higher than the rate of non-survivors. And we argue today that it is these reminders, these rhetoric, that constantly feeds the mindset, no thank you, that Israel is under threat, especially in a hostile Arab peninsula. Right? We therefore argue that Israel thinks it is insecure, and it's this feeling of being insecure that constantly feeds the rhetoric of military, that it needs to feed its military muscle, it needs to bomb innocent people in Palestine in order to assert its sovereignty. This leads to a vicious cycle of reprisals, right? An attack um, of, on either side which results in brutal stalemate and deadlock because either side feels that they have no legitimacy and both sides feel that they need something to assert themselves on the global arena. We argue that Germany is currently responsible for this and it's not simply a matter of their ancestors who committed this act. Why? Because first, when people accept the privileges of citizenship, they inherently accept with it the historical baggage that comes with the state. Right? So, we argue therefore, uh, secondly, that as a developed nation, Germany, which champions human rights in the EU and the world, Germany cannot right, cop use the cop-out of ignoring UN resolutions or refusing to make a stand on Israel because it needs to make a stand on a harm it has caused and needs to actively choose to end it. We therefore argue that Germany needs to do something. Why is the two-state solution in Palestine the best, pro the best solution to this problem? No, we already characterize the Israel-Palestine conflict as an issue of sovereignty. The issue of sovereignty means that both sides need, um, need some measure of confidence that they are not going to be attacked and that sovereignty is protected. Right? The difference between Israel and Palestine is that Israel is legitimate and is considered legitimate, no thank you, but Palestine is not. And it's therefore, because it is not recognized by the international community, it is not protected by IHL, international humanitarian law, and because it is no thank you, other countries that attack it will not be sanctioned by the UN, they will not be taken to task. And this is why Bellico's behavior has allowed to fester in the, in the, Israel, in the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. We therefore argue today that when Palestine is where 3,000 people die a month needs 
urgent protection to the international community under international humanitarian law. And when we give it to them, we think that they will therefore be treated with respect without having to resort to bellicose behaviour to assert their sovereignty, without having to assert that they are a legitimate state because we have already given it to them. A seat on the UN, for instance, means any incision on the West Bank is, con is, is attributed to an incursion of international humanitarian law and it can be settled in international courts, right, the International Court of Justice for territorial disputes. We therefore argue that we give Palestinians exactly what they need. Now, why is it that Germany is an instrumental actor, no thank you, and why is it not that Israel is the one that needs to be complicit in this action? So, first of all, right, um, the, only, the recognition of Palestine as a state will only be complete right, when Israel agrees to do this. And we argue that Germany has the best chance out of the whole toolbox of actions in order to do this. Why? Because Israel is entirely dependent on Germany for two main things. First, trade, which is the, because Germany is the largest uh, trade partner in the, in the European Union. And the second most important trade partner overall, hold on a moment, worth $2.3 billion. Yes, ma'am. Don't you think that they have enough support from the United States that they don't need the support for, from Germany? Thank you. The United States vetoes resolutions that recognize Palestinian states and continues to allow the human rights abuses that are happening currently in the Israel-Palestine conflict and allow the Palestinians to be killed en masse. We therefore argue that the United States cannot be the one who acts in this capacity. And I'll explain more to you that later. So the second reason why, uh, why uh, Israel is entirely linked to Germany is because of historical reasons which I've already elaborated above. So Germany is already actively repatriating for the wrongs that they have caused, right? And they have paid $25 billion in repatriations in 55 years. We therefore argue today that Germany has the greatest probability of effectively reducing the threat that Israel has. No, thank you. Germany is all the only country with a track record of success. German, uh, German's refusal to deliver submarines, for instance, made, Jewish, uh, made, made, made Israel delay the establishment of Jewish settlements illegally in the West Bank. We therefore argue to you today that Germany's influence is the best and because it's an economic tie, it affects people on the ground. We argue already that, uh, that Israeli people don't condone the rocket strikes in people in Gaza. They don't condone the killing of innocent teenagers right, um, by an uh, Israeli state. We therefore argue today that when Germans threaten to remove the economic ties, threaten to import economic sanctions, there will be internal pressure as well as external pressure to make Israel move. Other policies right, that might seem to work, like the United States acting, simply doesn't because the United States is a supremely strong Jewish lobby with, and has vetoed 44 resolutions on, on taking action against Europe, Israel's uh, illegitimate actions over 40 years. We therefore argue today that Germany is the best actor to do this because of its leading role in the EU and is a nation which seeks to condone human rights globally. We therefore argue today that it is a time to write a new chapter in the Israel-Palestine conflict. It's time to write a new chapter where bloodshed will end, and the only side which is able to do this and to stem the blood flow permanently is side proposition.